stupid superhero. Yo, Ralph Bear here. <clears throat> Mr. Han? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Mr. Han. Katie Lyon here, reportedly creeped out. All right, furry reporter, awesome! Just so you know, I'm a respected member of Channel 25 News. Hey, take your top off, baby! He is not affiliated with me. We're reviewing Boys Night Out, a 2003 1950s throwback adult animation <laughs> animated by the dynamic duo of Burt Klein and Teddy Newton. If those names sound very familiar, it's because these fellas have their hands in working on two of Brad Bird's animations, The Iron Giant and The Incredibles. Why yes, these guys are Pixar and Disney animators. Burt Clean is an animator for Wreck-It Ralph, Zootopia, and Big Hero 6. Yeah, that'll get some asses in seats. Hey, what about Frozen? <laughs> Let it go. Oh. Yes, sir. Ted Newton was the real dirty-minded head honcho behind this short. His character design, narrative style, and authentic transatlantic dialect all scream the 1950s. Tell you what, get on your knees. I gotta make you look a little older first. He was the newsreel announcer in The Incredibles, did the character designs for the Pixar short Presto, and directed Day and Night. We begin with the Lindbergh family on their usual night. Mom is going out for Bible study, the Lindbergh boy is bored out of his mind, and the stepdad spends the night out with his son to a strip club, like most fathers and sons know If I still have kids, which I don't, I would have given it like a couple of years, maybe like, oh I don't know, 15 or 17 tops instead of going borderline kindergarten with this kid here. It'll be a lot less awkward for him at show and tell the next day, I'll give you that. <laughs> at a glance, this cartoon seems like a 12-piece bucket of fan service with all the breasts and thighs you could want. But if you go just a tiny bit deeper, it's actually a brilliant satire of the 1950s. The motto for that whole decade was, it's better swept under the rug. Which is why everyone in this five-minute short keeps telling Lindbergh, don't tell blank, they won't understand even though they're all at the same place. Which is a pretty on-the-nose message. My God! You're telling me that sexiness has a deeper meaning? No wonder I learned so much by looking at that lady's butt. She has vital information for your everyday life. Stupid is not a deep message. That's her phone number. Huh? Oh. Hey, that tall, dark, and handsome. Do you want a nice, strong woman? Do you want a woman that doesn't take any sh**? Well, call Shaniqua for a good time. That's 954-444-95. I wouldn't recommend it. She smells like dropout, bad decisions, and very depressing issues. And the lawsuits and the so much all the wrong keeps piling up from bribing the bouncer, giving the Meyer the taste of the pink and bubbly, and making him see way too many things for a kid his age. And also, let's note how incredibly biting these strippers are. From a dominatrix with the whip, to, why hello Emma Frost, and that one stripper with a face on her tip. <laughs> and so far, I'm assuming most of you totally think that this Ted Newton fella is such a rambunctious little minx. But, you be wrong. What makes it more hilarious is how messed up it is, and how self-aware the cartoon is on the situation, or in more simpler terms, that's the joke. And I think the Napoleon ending was also the dead giveaway on said awareness. So thus, the Lindbergh boy, after going through that experience, is now a different man. Years later, his feelings and treatment of women change entirely. He'll be the talk of the city and become the most wanted man for years to come. That boy, or now man, will forever be Hugh Hefner, Playboy. What? You expect a dead hooker joke? Ha 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 you sick bastards! Oh. Ralph, help! Huh? The strippers are way too much woman for me! 
have got this. Oh, ladies! Overall, we adore the short. It's quite ballsy with the setup, and the animation style is a beloved classic that'll go on and evolve to the end of time. The bold outline and simplistic UPA animation style. The style started off big, with animator John Hubley's Robin Hoodlum and later Gerald McBoing Boing and Rudy Toot Toot. The style is done most likely to save cost in animation and simplify the character designs. But in turn, instead of it being dumbed down to the point of it looking bland, it makes the designs look unique, pleasing, and even more recognizable in the end. Yeah, there's no complex detail in muscles or any complicated piping or grid or anything like that in the backgrounds, clothing, or even objects in the world of the animation. Even Hanna-Barbera and Filmation does animation like that with their more comic book-esque designs. They move stiff and just look corporate. Overall, the best way to sum up the art style along with the Baby Boomer Decade in a nutshell is sleek and simple. With those designs, without knowing the cartoons, you can tell the characters from their personalities, like Dexter for example. He's just a box. Thus like all scientists, he's pretty much close-minded. <laughs> Dee Dee being more happy and free spirited is more loose like her arms and legs being all lanky or you can tell who the bad guys are by them looking all sharper and exaggerating with their limbs and back going for a hunchback look showing how crooked and creepy they are. Plus the UPA animation style likes to exaggerate people's body type or character traits through physical attributes. Smaller, rounder characters are cutesy and childlike. Male shoulders, chests, and jawlines are all made up of squares and triangles to emphasize their manliness. And half circles and curves are used to demonstrate a woman's sexiness or show what a mother looks like after popping out a few kids, like Dexter's mom. Although my only complaint, and this is a weird one by most, but... The animation, while visually, we just absolutely adore it, I felt that the animation is too fluid, if that also makes any sense. They really went overboard with the smears as well. Everything moves so rubbery, jiggly, and bouncy that I almost got motion sickness from just simply watching... Oh, oh god. Look. I wish they further stick with the UPA-inspired look by just limiting down the animation by like the level of the style they were inspired upon or anything around an MGM era text every cartoon. Where for any other scenes, the characters have more simpler movements only for a very quick movement whenever a slapstick gag happens or a character makes a wild take. And the only time you can quench the fluidity up is on the fan service scenes which I think that alone will blow out the budget. The crazy emphasis of the rubberiness of the animation really reminds me of the season 1 of Simpsons episode, Some Enchanted Evening, where the animators of the show struggle to find their frame by frame style only for the end of looking so rubbery and off model that Matt Groening had to have his team heavily reanimate most of it. It's quite obvious that Burke Klein and Teddy Newton have more experience as the character designs are more on model despite fluidity than the old Simpsons episode. Plus, they have all that experience on their IMDb page alone, especially all their stuff they did way before Iron Giant. <coughs> I guess that's what happens if you let go of the leash of your animators and they don't limit themselves once they do their own thing. Or it could be a stylistic choice, just like their Pixar short Day and Night, where the rubbery animation style worked way more better with those blob-like Day and Night characters. I think a style like this could be a love it or leave it kind of thing for somebody. Overall, this animation is highly recommended for you animation lovers in general, especially if you love anything with the most magical place on Earth. Wait, is it either Pixar or Disney? Yes. And besides, this animation deserves much more attention outside of the constant re-uploads on YouTube, Dailymotion, and 
other illegal cartoon sites that I may or may not know of. That, and as far as we know, no one never bothered to do a video review dedicated towards it. I like how the short, despite its material, is surprisingly old school cheesecake level tame enough that you don't actually see women's crotches or nipples as the only nipples on this entire cartoon is a statue. And like Katie said earlier, the satirical edge and the story holds this short up greatly. But wait! Did you know that this short almost ended up being a scene in the Iron Giant? Say, Say what? what? Yep, no fooling. It was Burt Clean's idea to do a scene where Kit Mansley take Hogarth to a strip club to gain his trust and to find the giant. It was meant to be a funny scene and, well, that's it. You're bullshitting me. When I was at Disney's, um, when I first started there, I made a, one of my first friends there was Teddy Newton, who was very young and very talented. And he, what did he do? His story guy. He left Disney. He, he, his most recent thing is he uh, directed a, I think he was nominated for an Oscar day and night. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Pixar. For Pixar. Yeah. He's a Pixar guy now. And while I was working at Disney, he had boarded a joke sequence for Brad Bird's Iron Giant that no one would ever use or ever touch. That was a joke sequence where the villain had taken Hogarth uh, to a strip joint. And it was just sort of like an <laughs> a, a completely like off-color like joke sequence, like a gag drawing that no one would use. And it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. So we got together and said, you know, it's a shame that this will never see the light of day because it's completely off-color. And I was a lot younger at the time, and this was, uh, you know, this is certainly in a more foolish time in my life, a time before I found God, you know, and we made the film. And I said, let's make this film. And we called it Boys Night Out. And I am, you know, we, we did it together. So it was the drop sequence from Iron Giant. Iron Giant we changed the changed characters around, changed the name. And it's basically about a stepdad who doesn't want to watch his kid and he takes him to a strip club. And, <laughs> and and somebody put it on YouTube, and it's getting tons and tons of views. And, uh, you know, it's very popular on there at the same time. I Now that I you know, have kids and I, I can't necessarily advocate doing that, I, I consider it a folly of youth. But we did that, and it was nominated for an Annie Award. Oh, all right. And I, um, I got a lot of, um, you know, I animated most of it. Eric Goldberg helped out. He animated... Uh, how long is it? About six minutes. And how? It was in full color, it? called Boys Night Out. Oh, Boys Night Out. Okay. Uh, Boys Night Out. Um, and uh, Eric animated a couple amazing shots on it. People can always tell them because they're so much better than everyone else's. So Teddy and I directed that together, and we were very excited. Uh, you know, put our own uh, money into it because um, hey, we didn't have any responsibilities at the time, and it was nominated for an Annie Award. Well, shut my mouth and call me stupid. That's me! And I'm with him. I think if this had been left in the Iron Giant, it would have really taken Kent Bansley deep into creepy Unclesville, not to mention royally messing up the pacing of the movie, getting caught in some kind of muddy sidetrack that really slows down the show. The reason this works so well as a short is because we get a fresh batch of characters with no pre-designated personality. Lindbergh gets pushed and pulled around with hardly any protest, but Hogarth would have booked at the first sign of trouble, not to mention getting some help from his titular Iron Giant. Ultimately, leaving it out of the Iron Giant and replacing it with the montage was the better choice. Not only for keeping the pacing the way it should be and telling the story the way it should be told, but for keeping the rating that they wanted. Come on and check it out! You can't miss out on the humor, the clever writing, and all the special funny messages in the entire short. It's great for you animation lovers and enthusiasts. They're gonna see it for the boobies. That's why I say enthusiast. Silly, Mr. Han.
And speaking of enthusiasts, Katie, I think the sailors are getting enthusiastic themselves. Want to take off your top to satisfy these jerks? Oh, fine. <laughs>